Do you want to know the quickest way to find and solve X-Wings? Do you also want to know the quickest way to find and solve Sudoku skyscrapers? Keep watching and I'll do that, plus explain all the differences in how these two advanced strategies work. Greetings friend, Timberlake here. Let's start with the X-Wing. Okay, so what's the definition of a Sudoku X-Wing? Well, an X-Wing pattern occurs when there's two rows or two columns each contain only two cells that hold a matching candidate. The candidate must reside in both rows and share the same two columns or vice versa. Okay, so let's look at this puzzle diagram. This is from the puzzle I saw called Nested by Bondi. If you look right here at the candidate fours, you'll notice that there's only two places for a four in row two, here in column one and in column nine. And I have those highlighted in orange. If you go down here to row eight, there's only two places for a four in row eight, and that's in column one and also in column nine. So it's the same uh, candidate four, same two positions in two different rows, columns one and columns nine. So what we have here is an X-wing. So how do you solve for an X-wing? Well, what you know is that the four has to be either here or here, right? It gets its name X-wing because you can kind of do an X across as a pattern but it's actually more related to swordfish and jellyfish. And those have the similar type concepts, but I'm not gonna cover those in this particular video. And what we know is if you, if this was a four, then this cell and this cell could not be a four. And so the only place left here in row eight for there to be a four would be on this end right here. So if there's a four right here, there's gonna be a four right there. Vice versa, if this is not a four, this has to be a four. And so there's a four right here, this cannot be a four, and so there has to be a four right here. So in the second situation, the four is either here or here. In either case, uh, a four has to be in one of these two spots and it has to be in one of these two spots, which means that we can eliminate all the other candidate fours from these columns. And so this is called the, uh, the base set, which is the one that contains the fours, and then you have like the cover set, and that's the ones where you can eliminate all of the uh, all the fours. So there's only two here. The ones there's more than two, you can start eliminating. So I can eliminate all these fours. Uh, once you've exhausted the seven most popular strategies to solve the Sudoku puzzle and you're still stuck, then this is the next strategy I'd have you look for. Look for an X Wing because they're pretty common in more advanced puzzles. And once you know what to look for, they're pretty quick to spot for in a and to solve. Uh, one other thing I want to show you real quick is let's say uh, I didn't put a four in row one or row eight. So like right here, let's say, oh, I tried to put a four right here. What would happen to the puzzle? Well, yeah, it shows you that the uh, four doesn't belong there. But what you'd notice is that now you have no place, you know, the four could not be here in row two. It couldn't be here in row eight. And so what you'd see is now for row two and eight, the four is saying would have to be in both spots, but that's in column one. Both of these spots left are in column one, and that's impossible. You break the puzzle. You can't put a four in two spots right here and here. So that's why we can eliminate candidates like this that are outside of those base sets. Okay, so let's move on to our next example. Actually going to do it from this very same puzzle right from here. Um, so why don't you look and see if you can find another X-Wing in this puzzle using the candidate 4. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spot it. Kind of gave you a little tip here by putting the pointer uh, on this cell. But there is another X-Wing of 4s using columns 2, or excuse me, columns 3 and column 7. What you'll notice is that there's only two 4s here in column 3 and they're in row uh, one and five. There's only two fours here in column seven, and they're in row one and five as well. We have another X-wing. What I wanted to show you is that this first X-wing, the base sets were in the rows, and the cover sets were in the columns. Well, it works in reverse as well. So in this one, you see that the base sets are the columns, right? Columns three and seven, which means the cover sets, the ones that we can eliminate, are here uh, across row one and five. So we know that that can't be four, that can't be four, that can't be a four, and that can't be a four. I love finding these 
X-Wings because they usually will pop out at me, especially if you're highlighting all the candidates in the puzzle. And they can really go a long way to help you solve uh, a puzzle that may be a little bit too difficult for something that requires like Snyder rotation because you will have to show all the candidates in order to solve a puzzle using an X-Wing. Before we move on to skyscrapers, I just wanted to say, if you're wondering, hey, Tim, like, I don't know if I want to subscribe to your channel because I'm not sure when I'll get new, great new content. Well, I post new content every Friday and Sunday. So subscribe right now and you can get a new video for me to watch to start and end your weekend. Now, let's move on to skyscrapers. Okay, so what you're looking at colored here is a skyscraper. It's very closely related to an X-Wing, but it works a little bit different when it comes to eliminating candidates. So, this puzzle is from my Taming Sudoku Dragon How to Do a Hard Puzzle. And I'll put a link to that video up here. And one of the strategies we needed to solve that puzzle was a skyscraper. And here it is. So, what's the definition? A skyscraper is when there's only two rows or columns that only contain two of the same digits. Two of those same candidates are in the same row or column, but the other two are not. And that's where the skyscraper gets its name. So look right here. There's two candidates here in column 5, and there's two candidates here in column nine of 9s. What you'll notice is that two of them are in the same row. So these 9s are in the same row, but these two are not. And as a skyscraper name, usually it's kind of like a tall building here and another tall building here with a little slant. That's how I... I visualize it as being a skyscraper. It's actually a type of solving thing called a turbot fish, uh, which uses an alternate inference chain. That's big terminology. You don't need that. So let me simplify it for you. The idea behind this is that we know a nine has to be either here or here in column five. So if this was not a nine, this would be a nine. If this was a nine, this would not be a nine. And since there's only two places for a nine here in column nine, this would have to be a nine. So we know if this was not a 9, this would have to be a 9. So any cell that these two see, you could eliminate a 9. Vice versa, if this was not a 9, this would be a 9. That would not be a 9. And then this would have to be a 9. So we go through, and with either case, if this isn't a 9, that one is has to be. If this one is not a 9, that one has to be. So what can you eliminate for this skyscraper? Well, whatever cells these both see. So they will see six cells. And I'll just highlight those in pink. So you can eliminate a nine from all of these three cells and from these three cells. And obviously, if there's already a, a cell's already solved, you're not eliminating anything there. And if there's no nine, not eliminating. But we happen to be able to eliminate a nine from here, here, and here. Uh, something else I wanted to point out is it still has the idea of a base column, which is a row. So in this case, it's a base uh, set, which is this row eight, where they two match. And then these are kind of like the cover sets where you're going to do the eliminations. But realize they are not in the same row and they're not in the same column, these two at the top. Let's move on to our next example. Okay, for my second example, uh, this is a puzzle I had solved previously. Uh, it was a classic Zoku made by Turganis. I'll put the link to that video uh, up above. Well, what I'll tell you is that there is a skyscraper of sixes uh, in this position. So why don't you pause the video, and I'll give you a few seconds, see if you can spot the skyscraper of sixes in this position. Okay, congratulations if you spot it. You are really picking up uh, skyscrapers. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, here are the base. Uh, base set right here, and then the two tops are here and here. So you notice there's only two sixes along row one, and there's only two sixes in row six. And they share one column in common, so that is column eight. And then they the other two can't do not share the same row column. So we can make elimination. Now the powerful part about a skyscraper is you want them in the same uh band you know so so the three you see how there's there's three uh column four five and six four and six that way you can make the most of the eliminations because if this was out here you'd only be able to make two eliminations uh you'd be able to make elimination down here for this cell and this cell it's the most effective you can eliminate up to six candidates 
when they are in the uh, the same is called a band. Okay, so where can we make an elimination uh, of the sixes? All right, so if you remember, there's six spots we can look at. And you'll notice that there's no sixes here, but there is a six right there. So we can eliminate a six from that spot. Okay, I want to give one other word of caution here. And this is the big difference between a skyscraper and an X-wing. You might be asking, well, hey, Timberlake, I eliminated these sixes here, but these two, don't one of these have to be a six? Can't I just eliminate this six right down here? And you would think, yeah, well, that works just like an X-wing. Why not? Well, here's, this, here's the deal, and here's the difference between an X-wing and a skyscraper. We know that one of these purple cells has to be a six. But since these sixes are not in the same row or column, they could both be a six. This could be a six, and this could be a six. In that situation, you would have no six here or here. And so that means the solution to this column of six would be outside of these two cells. So if there's another opportunity, this could possibly be a six. Now, if you work out this puzzle, you'll know that the six is one of these two spots. But what I'm saying is you do not want to go and make eliminations along the base set of a skyscraper for this very reason, because both of these two ends, tops of the skyscraper, could be a six. The other thing I wanted to show is you notice that this was a column for the base column, where the first example, it was a base set was a row. Uh, skyscrapers, just like X-wings, work both ways. But you'll, you'll see here that you can eliminate six candidates, up to six candidates for a skyscraper. With an X-wing, you can eliminate up to 14. So X-wing's a little bit more powerful than a skyscraper. So what did you learn about X-wings and skyscrapers in this video? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to Smart Hobby so you don't miss any new content. Also be on the lookout for some YouTube collaborations by yours truly in the very near future. In the meantime, please check out these other videos from my channel. Thank you so much for watching.